If you're an eighth grader and you're graduating tonight, can you wave? All right. If you are a eighth grade parent, can I see you folks wave? There we go. And if you are a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a family friend, a sibling of someone who's graduating tonight, can you wave? It is great to have all of you here. Bethany is one big family. And if something that we've learned throughout this entire year, and especially over these past two months, that we are all in this together. We have a slide presentation to go through with our program tonight. Um, we will have opportunities in which we will be honoring our, our eighth graders with their diplomas, but we will also be doing something special this year that we haven't done in previous years because of the situation that we find ourselves in with the COVID epidemic. And that is we'll be giving our eighth graders their uh, subject awards, um, the ones that they normally get during an honors assembly during the school year. This, this time, however, we'll be doing it right in the middle of our ceremony. We have some wonderful music tonight. We have a guest speaker tonight, and we have an opportunity again to be together one more time as a school community before this school year ends. So tonight, we are gonna start off with some beautiful music from our kindergarten teacher, uh, Karen Gately, who'll be playing the flute for us. And then from there, we'll be going right into um, our entering hymn, Pomp and Circumstance. Ms. Gately.
Give thanks to the Lord. Oh, it's time for our Bethany School hymn. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Please join with me in saying, sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now if you please join with me in saying together the Bethany School Prayer. Thank you, O God for calling us to be a family. Teach us how much we need each other. Help us to love, to serve, to respect, and to forgive each other. Help us to know that you are always with us as we pray together, learn together, and play together. Each day, let us hear your word so that together we may grow in Christ, serving you faithfully and with joy. Amen. A reading from Psalm 78, 
verses one through eight. My people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth with a parable. I will utter hidden things, things from of old, things we have heard, things our ancestors have told us. We will not hide from them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his powers, and the wonders he has done. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children. So the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born, and they, in turn, would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. They would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation, whose hearts were not loyal to God. Spirits were not faithful to him. Here ends the lesson. reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father, no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here ends the reading. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Parl Bawa, our speaker tonight. She was born in Columbus, Ohio, and received her Bachelor of Science in Psychology from The Ohio State University. She received her degree in medicine from the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine in Baltimore, Maryland, specializing in pediatrics. Prior to moving to Cincinnati, Dr. Bawa served as chief resident at Children's Memorial Hospital in Chicago, Illinois, and was in private practice in Glenview, Illinois. She is also a recipient of the Emanuel O. Doyne Community Teaching Award, also known as the Mead Johnson National Award for 2014. Parl and her husband, Rahul, sent their two daughters, Ronnie and Rocky, to Bethany. Ronnie graduated in 2013 and went on to graduate from Ursuline Academy in 2017. She is now heading into her senior year at The Ohio State University. Rocky graduated from Bethany in 2016 and is one of the most recent graduates of Ursuline Academy. She will also be attending OSU in the fall. Harl has been deeply involved in the life of Bethany School for as long as I've been at this school. She served as co-chair of the Capital Campaign Committee that raised funds for the current building project. She was part of the committee that developed Bethany's Board of Trustees, and she is now finishing up her first two-year term as Bethany's first and only president of the Board of Trustees. She has also agreed to serve for another two-year term. Now, for anyone who knows Parl, you can count on her for two things. Number one, that she'll be cheering loudly as she roots for her football team, the Ohio State University Buckeyes, to win another ch national championship. And number two, that she will give her absolute all to any project. Parl's commitment to Bethany's mission and her passion for advocating for children has helped put Bethany's school on a truly exciting path. I'm honored to have worked closely with Parl for these past few years, 
And I am so grateful for her wisdom, her intelligence, her humor, and her desire to help Bethany School's light continue to shine for many years to come. I present to you, Parl Bawa, our speaker. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you very much. That was a, appreciate that introduction. Um, I, I feel like I should say OH, but I'm gonna- <laughs> I O. <laughs> so hello, all eighth graders. First, let me say congratulations. And also, I need to say I am really sorry that your graduation is not going to be in person. I remember all the fun activities that they had for the eighth graders when both of my girls graduated. And so I am really very sorry that you guys did not get a chance to participate in some of those. You may be wondering, why is everyone so excited about eighth grade graduation? I will admit as a parent, I even kind of wondered, why are we so excited about eighth grade? However, I've realized now, you know, in hindsight, that that's actually a really important rite of passage. You're leaving this place that's been home to you for many years, and you're gonna go spread your wings. You're transitioning to the final four years of your formal education. So I tried to remember what my daughters thought about, what I worried about when they were getting ready to leave the safe cocoon of Bethany and broaden their horizons. Uh, I know they wondered about what it would be like socially in high school. And I think they wondered whether they'd still be able to keep in touch with their Bethany friends. You've had the same classmates for many years and Bethany is a very small school. Um, I know that my girls felt sad to leave all of their friends, but they were also really excited about the opportunity to meet a whole new group of people. They truly had a mix of feelings. They were gonna miss everyone, but they were also kind of a little tired of all of their classmates, sort of ready to move on. You guys may be a little bit nervous about meeting or finding a new group of friends. I believe Bethany has prepared you for this more than you probably even realize. You have lived diversity at Bethany and you've been taught to accept others' differences and under understand other people's viewpoints. Truly, I doubt that you will find the diversity that Bethany has at any other high school that you attend. Experiences like traveling to Australia, an international day, along with all that you've learned in the classroom have instilled that respect for others in all of you. When you go to high school, really all you need to do is keep doing what you have been taught. Keep an open mind and keep an open heart as you meet people. The more you are able to put yourself in their shoes, the more you will actually learn about yourself. And I hope as you go through high school, you will continue the process of learning about who you are as a person. As I watch my daughters go through high school and college, it's been really nice to see how much they've kept in touch with their Bethany classmates. So I have a quick funny story. My daughter Ronnie moved into her dorm at Ohio State her freshman year. And she was visiting another high school friend in a different dorm. And that friend was introducing her and saying, oh yeah, here's my friend, Ronnie Bawa. And all of a sudden, Ronnie hears a voice from a couple rooms down that says, Ronnie Bawa. And out comes running Charlotte Basson, one of Ronnie's classmates from Bethany. Um, and it's kind of neat. They actually are still in the same service organization at Bethany, I mean, at Ohio State, all these years later. So you may not see all of your Bethany classmates, you know, all the time. But remember, Bethany friendships are like, a, like that old favorite sweatshirt. It's really comfortable and you can be yourself in it. I do remember my girls worried about whether they would be prepared academically. History has shown that Bethany students do very well in high school. You've had the opportunity to participate in Model UN, in Power of the Pen. You've had science labs with Ms. Malaya, with Ms. Rodenberg and you've been taught Spanish by Senora Schlabach. Trust me, you are prepared. You've been taught by a caring and dedicated faculty who've invested their time in your personal growth to prepare you for this next step. So because Rocky has just graduated from high school and I'll have two in college here very soon, I feel like I, I should try to give you some advice as you depart Bethany. So there are three things that I want you to remember as you guys transition to high school. The first is take time to know yourself. Figure out who you are and what your goals and aspirations are, separate from those of your friends and separate from those of your parents. 
knowing yourself and accepting yourself will ultimately lead to inner happiness. The second is to embrace change. I'm not sure any of us are really good at accepting change. However, technology is resulting in rapid changes occurring all the time. The more you're able to keep an open mind, collaborate with others, and ride the wave of change, the more successful you'll be. Speaking of change, I doubt you could have witnessed more change than you have watching the Bethany campus transform over the past three years. You've already been taught to accept and embrace change in the form of large construction equipment. And I'm afraid in the form of a rather significant international pandemic. The third and last thing I want you to remember is your roots are at Bethany. Bethany has given you the foundation upon which you will build. What I said earlier about the fact that you're leaving home and spreading your wings is very true. Bethany has been a home to you for several years. Bethany is your family. It's supportive, it's nurturing, and it'll always be here for you. In fact, you'll come back to visit next year as, as students are really excited to do, and you'll walk around the campus and you'll feel like all of the other students at Bethany look really cute and small as you grow taller and kind of learn so much more about the world. So congratulations to all of you and good luck over the next four years. We look forward to seeing where, what you're gonna do and where you're gonna go. But remember, Bethany will always be home for you. Congrats, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Bala. Thank you. And now we will hear the eighth grade song, which is um, has its own introduction. So if we could go ahead and play that, please. This year's eighth grade song is a celebration of the time that these students have shared at Bethany School. In a show of support for this year's eighth grade class, classmates from other grade levels were invited to join in the singing since we cannot be there in person to honor them.
Mr. Wheeler, thank you eighth graders, thank you other students who participated in that song. We are now heading into, as I said at the beginning of this ceremony, uh, a unique situation in which we are giving these awards um, by a faculty that normally happen during our honors assembly. And so you'll be hearing the faculty members announcing uh, the awards and announcing the recipients of these awards. And I'm going to hand it over now to one of our eighth grade homeroom teachers, Ms. Michelle Rodenberg. This is Michelle Rodenberg. I have the privilege of announcing the second honors recipient from last trimester. My first individual is Journey Alexander, Mackenzie Coffey, Anna Jackson, Cameron Kennedy, John Snavely, and Ashlyn Stuckey. Congratulations. The pleasure and privilege of announcing our first honors students for the uh, past trimester um, is mine, um, Miss Dorgers. And our students for that are as follows. Michaela Anderson, Caden Ioha, Lauren Jones, Shannon Kinnebrew, Alex McDolan, Rachel Mitchell, Travin Shaker, Abby Senna, Mira Shaw, Madden Smith, Ben Sovek, Vivian Wessels, and Ann Whalen. Uh, 
Um, I'm here uh, to talk about the mock trial team, the mock trial team that unfortunately didn't happen. Uh, like some other things, uh, Mr. Chapman and uh, Ms. Dorger and I um, worked with nine eighth graders and, and a mess of seventh graders um, to put two teams together for this year's mock trial. And um, of course, with the uh, virus, um, that went away. But the eighth graders on this team uh, would have made phenomenal attorneys. They were doing incredible work uh, getting ready for the showcase. Um, and uh, we would have had uh, four really fantastic mock trial teams, I'm sure. So I would just like to um, encourage all of you to look into high school mock trial. Most of the schools you're going to do have high school teams and uh, you should definitely look into that. Um, so I wanted to acknowledge uh, the uh, eighth graders on the mock trial team. Um, that is Journey Alexander, Michaela Anderson, Caden Yoha, Alex McDoolan, Shravan Shekhar, Abby Senna, Mira Shaw, Vivian Wessels, and Ann Whalen. Thank you all for a job really well done this year. Hello everyone, this is um, Mr. Marvin Lane and uh, I just wanna say hello eighth graders, families and faculty. And it is my honor along with Ms. Aker to recognize the eighth grade students who served on student council for the 2019-2020 school year. Um, but before I, uh, before we recognize the honorees, I want to read uh, kind of an overview, um, a summary written by Mira Shaw, our current president of student council. And it reads as follows. This year, student council was organized by a, a variety of different events from a winter wonderland dance to a virtual spirit week. Our biggest project of the year was Kindness Kid of the Week, which was a creative way to recognize students' act of kindness, towards faculty members, as well as other students. We had many plans for service projects that included volunteering at nursing homes and hospitals, as well as trips to the free, for, uh, free store food bank that were unfortunately canceled due to the quarantine. However, during this time, we worked what we had to make a virtual spirit week, spirit week including themes like game day, creative arts day, sports day, Decades Day, and Bethany Day. Even though this was not the way we anticipated to end our, our year, Student Council made the best of what we had and kept the Bethany spirit alive. And now, Ms. Aker for uh, recognizing our honorees. Sorry. <laughs> our student council members for this year included Mira Shaw, our president, Ann Whalen, vice president, Journey Alexander, chair of service, Mackenzie Coffey, eighth grade representative, and Anna Jackson, eighth grade representative. Please join me in giving a round of applause. And one thing I would like to also mention to all of our student council members. Um, you will also receive in the mail, and we can really see it, this pin, recognizing you as uh, a part of our student council for this year. So congratulations to all of you. So another quick round of applause. All right, so I get to talk about the Glendale Monday Club uh, Class Book Award. And I just wanted to read really quickly an overview of what the Monday Club is. Um, so from their own words, the Glendale Monday Club is a women's club founded in Glendale in 1877 for the intellectual improvement and recreation of its members. Still today, members meet twice each month 
and present original papers written on a topic of the presenter's choice for the education and enjoyment of its members. It is our hope that your students love to read, to write, and to learn through reading. Some may even aspire to be authors. Our intention is for books to be purchased for your school's library and as a uh, reward for deserving students, students who love to read and write. So with that in mind um, of what the Glendale Monday Club's aims are and what this uh, award represents, um, I had the challenge of choosing uh, two students, a boy and a girl, um, who could represent uh, Bethany School as students who love to read, who love to write, um, who seek to challenge themselves intellectually through reading and writing, um, and who, uh, you know, have writing dreams, who want to better themselves, who want to share what they've written. Um, and every year, you know, of course, it's a challenge because I have, I have a lot of really capable students. Um, but this year, I had two really shining stars um, that I would like to talk about. And my two students are Rachel Mitchell and Travin Shaker. Um, and I just wanted to say really quickly that both of these students have just gone um, above and beyond in terms of pushing themselves to be creative writers. Um, Shravan was um, very active during our poetry unit and wrote his own original poetry that he shared with me, that he shared with his classmates. Um, and Shravan, I encourage you to continue writing um, as you go through high school and college and beyond because it is such a great intellectual ex exercise. Um, Rachel was a student who received um, honors in the scholastic um, art and writing uh, competition that happened this uh, past year. She received an honorable mention for um, a short story that she wrote. It was uh, a pleasure to be able to be one of the first people to read it and to offer her feedback and to help her through that submission process. Um, and of course, I am enormously proud of her. Um, and I hope that someday when Rachel and Travin have uh, published their novel and their poetry anthology respectively that I can have them on my classroom shelves. So uh, give those guys a round of applause. I also get to uh, I also get to present the Gene Farmer English Achievement Award, um, and the Gene Farmer English Achievement Award is not only for someone who has uh, shown great promise in the area of literature and writing and English, um, but I also think it's very important to recognize somebody who has shown great improvement as well. Um, and the student that I have nominated and was chosen for this award is a student who in, uh, you know, in previous English classes was not always quite certain of themselves. They were a little bit uh, hyper attentive to mistakes that they were making. Um, but I've watched the student grow enormously, um, become significantly more confident in their work, um, produce fantastic writing, um, and challenge themselves in ways that I think are just very much deserving of this award. And that student is Kaden Ioha. So Kaden, congratulations. I'm very proud of you. You have come such a long way since uh, first coming into English class in seventh grade. And I know that you are going to be uh, a great writer and thinker. And uh, that's what we look for in our English class students. And you are very, very deserving of this award, Kaden. Congratulations. Give them a round of applause, folks. Hello, I'm Angela Aker. Um, it's my pleasure to recognize um, not one, but actually two students this year for this math award. Um, these two students have been extremely competitive since I've known them in seventh grade. Um, they both participate in class discussions. They both actually love math, which is kind of rare. <laughs> um, they've both been in math counts um, and they have extremely high averages in my class this year. Um, 
my two recipients of the Thryn Molokar Math Achievement Award are Abby Senna and Alex McDoolan. Congratulations. Good evening. I am Julissa Schlava, and I am presenting the Spanish Achievement Award for this year to a student who has demonstrated consistent hard work and a dedication to learn the new language. This student has mastered both spoken and writing in Spanish, and I sincerely wish all the best in Spanish to honors program in high school. Congratulations to Mira Chav. Hello, the Paul Dow Dawson Science Achievement Award is the reason why IPS is at Bethany. He was one of our old headmasters and he also taught IPS. This award is given to an individual who worked hard no matter what, uh, was dedicated, and when they might not have always understood what was going on, showed up um, to lunch and recess to work with me, or actually even on extra Zooms in order for this individual to understand the concepts being taught. I am so pleased to give this award to Annie Whalen. Congratulations, Miss Annie. Good evening, this is Clyde Chapman. It is my pleasure to announce the History Award, a subject that is very near and dear to my heart. This particular student showed excellent uh, analysis of history. Um, great writer, enjoyed having discussions. This person didn't just think outside the box. They didn't believe in boxes. I'm pleased to announce Rachel Mitchell as the History Award winner. Hi, my name is Joe Snavely and I'm the Bethany School Chaplain and it is my honor to uh, offer the award for our Acolyte um, Award this year. The Acolytes play a very important role in our worship at Bethany School. Not only do they help support our worship by carrying the holy items, the cross, the candles, um, the, the scripture um, during our worship services, and, uh, but we also ask them to take that role as a servant leader out of the chapel and into our community as well. And I'm uh, so proud of this group of eighth graders. Uh, they did that last part in particular, especially well this year. It was a group of servant leaders, so it was difficult to make this choice. But the person that I chose is someone who um, really stood out among uh, the acolytes that I've worked with at Bethany, someone who not only did their job very well in leading our worship, uh, but also helped to organize and inspire the others uh, who participated as well. And so you might imagine that I tried to give this to someone else, but it would not be fair if I did not give it to John Snavely. Congratulations, John. Hi, this is David Gould again. The Carson Scholars Fund is a national program designed to recognize and reward outstanding students in the United States who, who exemplify academic excellence and humanitarian qualities. Carson Scholars receive a $1,000 scholarship invested towards a four-year college or university, a medal and certificate, and an invitation to a regional recognition uh, ceremony. The goal of the Carson Scholars Fund goes beyond instilling an interest in college early on and assisting with the costs of college. Carson Scholars are role models in their schools. They encourage other students to strive for excellence and serve as peer role models. Carson Scholars are recognized by their school. They are honored for their academics and motivated to continue to strive for excellence. Schools are allowed to nominate only one student to apply to the scholarship program. The nominee must have a certain level of high GPA and will be chosen based upon their GPA and for their community service work beyond school. Bethany School was blessed to have a number of eighth graders who fit this criteria, and so it was an unenviable endeavor to select that one person 
to represent Bethany School on the national stage. Simply the recognition of being the Carson Scholar nominee is a recognition in and of itself that happened back during the first half of the school year. But this year, for the second time in school history, we actually have a Carson Scholar recipient. And I'm pleased to recognize Shravan Shaker. And I've got this big trophy in my office that I can't wait to put Shravan's name right on there. Congratulations, Shravan. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Lane. Um, and I have the honor of uh, the Spirit of Bethany Award um, and honoring that, that uh, recipient. And the Bethany, a Bethany education is more than simply academics. Although we are inter interested in how our students grow in the areas of math, reading, and science, we also have other goals in mind for our students. We want them to be good people. The Spirit of Bethany Award is designed as a way to recognize students who are, who are examples of good character by being respectful, responsible, trustworthy, caring, fair, and good citizens. At the end of the first half of the year, we seek input from folks around the school, teachers, staff, administrators. We ask them to think about students at each grade level who they see to be consistent role models of good character. Students who help like life at Bethany be positive and kind in the classrooms, at recess, during extracurricular and sporting events. In doing this, we have come up with a student from each grade level. And so this year we're honoring our eighth grade recipient today. And the honoree is Madden Smith. Congratulations, Madden. Good evening, everyone. This is Miss Wallen. I have the pleasure to give out the Honor Code Recognition Award this year. This award is given twice a year and it recognizes one student at each grade level, third through eighth, who represents the high ideals of Bethany School academics. The student's effort, honesty, and integrity exemplifies that being a good student at Bethany shows a respect for the academic pursuit of excellence combined with a strong moral compass that is illustrated in Bethany School's honor code. On my honor as a member of the Bethany School community, I pledge to pursue all academic and social endeavors with honesty and integrity. I will do my best to uphold the six pillars of good character, trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. For the second time this year, Shannon Kinnebrew receives the Honor Code Recognition Award. Well done, Shannon. The last award we have to give out before the uh, giving out of diplomas is the Blue Hawk Ambassador Award. This is the second year that we have given out the Blue Hawk Ambassador Award. And it is, and it, it is what it uh, sounds like, and that is we are looking for a boy and a girl who represents Bethany School beyond the walls of the school as ambassadors to the school. And this uh, award reads, the Blue Hawk Ambassador Award is given each year to one boy and one girl from the eighth grade who best exemplifies the good character and good mind of a Bethany School student. They represent the best qualities of a Bethany student and are seen as excellent role models for other students to follow. This year, the recipients are Mira Shaw and John Snavely. Congratulations. And now what we've all been waiting for, the presentation of diplomas. Now, wait a second. I believe eighth graders that some little uh, magical figures came and brought goodie bags to you a few days ago. Am I not um, in incorrect that you received some goodies and you received a cookie? And I believe the diploma was in there, right? Right, eighth graders? Uh, do, I, do some of you have your diplomas with you? Right there, ah, very good. 
Well, uh, parents and, um, and, and students, this is a good time to be able to get that diploma nearby because we're about to read the diploma names. Ms. Wallen, our Dean of Academics, is gonna read the names. And after they read the names, um, each student will hear a Bible verse that they have selected to be read after their name is announced. And those Bible verses will be read by Mr. Marvin Lane, our Dean of Student Life, and Mr. Snavely, our chaplain. Journey, Aaliyah Alexander. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Michaela Janelle Anderson. He counts the stars and calls them all by name. Psalm 147, verse 4. Mackenzie Grace Coffey. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Caden Agosa Ioha. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1, 6. Anastasia Rita Jackson. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Deuteronomy 31, 8. Lauren Elizabeth Jones. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Philippians 4, 8. Kyle Matthew Keller. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Psalm 37, 24. Cameron Isaiah Kennedy. Know also that wisdom is like honey for you. If you find it, there is a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Proverbs 24, 14. Shannon Kinnebrew. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Alexandria Hannah McDoolin. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 7. Rachel Naomi Janae Mitchell. Joe. Joe, would you read that one for me, please? Absolutely. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Psalm 24. Shravan Makorimbor Shaker. And behold, a lawyer stood up, 
to be put and to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Luke 10, 25-37. Abigail and Senna. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Second Corinthians chapter eight, chapter nine, verse eight. Mira Shaw. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. Madden Lynn Smith. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 to 26. John Thomas Fisher Snavely. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. Benjamin Leon Sobek. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Ashlyn Catrice Stuckey. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Vivian Marie Wessels. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are corrupted, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Anne Whalen. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. 1 Timothy 412. <laughs> Everybody is on the one there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh,
And now as we get ready to send our graduates out into the world, we like to do so with um, a bened special benediction and blessing. Um, usually when we do this, um, the leader will lead uh, the congregation through it and we'll have all the dads uh, respond and all the moms respond and then later the, the teachers um, and then everybody. Um, as Zoom sort of limits our uh, capability to do that because when a lot of people start talking, as you may have noticed, um, it, it sort of loses uh, coherent, uh, uh, coherence. And so uh, tonight I'm gonna to play the part of leader and um, Mr. Laval is going to represent the dads and uh, Ms. Dorger is going to represent the moms. Um, but please do uh, play your part from home as well. Uh, these are such powerful, important uh, things to say to these uh, really special kids. So I invite you all to join me. Graduates of 2020. Go and take the gift of fairness into our world. Go and take the gift of confidence into our world. Graduates of 2020. Go and take the gift of encouragement to our world. Go and take the gift of praise into our world. Graduates of 2020. Go and take the gift of hope into our world. Go and take the gift of love into our world. Graduates of 2020. Go and take the gift of faith into our world. Go and take the gift of compassion into our world. Graduates of 2020. Go and take the gift of charity into our world. Go and take the gift of patience into our world. Graduates of 2020. Go, Go and, and take, take our, our undying, undying love with you. With you. Take, take the best. best we, we have, have given you and know, and know we will be there to help guide, help guide your you path. path. <laughs> and now on behalf of the Bethany faculty, who I'm sure are all standing in their hearts, I say graduates of 2020, go and take all of our hopes with you. Go and take the best of our lessons with you. Take truth, justice, and peace into our world. You are our hope for the future, and remember that you take a piece of us with you as you go. Graduates of 2020, make the world a better place because you are in it. And now to offer our final blessing, um, to ask God's blessing on us, uh, we're inviting Sister Lynn, who is the liaison between the community of the Transfiguration and Bethany School. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us and remain with us forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lynn. In lieu of a closing uh, hymn, usually we have um, some closing hymns that are played as the students file out uh, in order, um, but, but that's a little weird when we're all sitting uh, still. So we're gonna play um, a video that we put together uh, with some pictures of the graduates. We shared this with them uh, earlier uh, in the week and um, it's also got some music with us. So we will go ahead and play this for you now as a way of uh, both celebrating them and of offering a closing hymn.
say faith is a childish game Play on children like it's Christmas Day Sing me a song Sing me a melody Sing out loud your symphony I want you to live forever Underneath the sky
In just a moment, I promise that we'll open up the microphones and we'll have an opportunity to say our great congratulations. But uh, I, I hope many of you have been following with a commemorative program that many of you eighth graders received during a pick up and drop off day today. I wanna thank Ms. Uh, Margie Kessler for the hard work that she put into to doing this and, and all the hard work that Ms. Kessler does to make uh, Bethany School run so smoothly. I did wanna, read to you though the words of appreciation because they're very important as we uh, conclude this service today. First of all, to a glorious, loving, and living God who gives us gifts far greater than we can ever ask or imagine, including tonight's graduates. Sincere appreciation to the families of tonight's graduates who have unconditionally supported and encouraged their children and Bethany School over the years. Heartfelt gratitude to the faculty and staff of Bethany School who have given innumerable hours above and beyond each school day to mentor our graduates. Genuine thanks to Sister Jean Gabriel, the superior, Sister Lynn Julian, uh, the, the, second, um, in, uh, the second superior, Sister Jacqueline Marie, and Sister Karina Elsa who have given their time and talents in the religion class and chapel. And to this class of graduates, the COVID class of 2020, it sounds kind of silly, but it's really serious here. You may think that your graduation will be forever defined by a pandemic, but those of us who know these students, who know these graduates, know that they will forever be remembered as the class who persevered through an unfathomably difficult period and who came out stronger as a result. Congratulations to you, class of 2020. Good night. Let's open up the microphone. Congratulations. Woo! Congratulations. 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 For ninth graders now. Ninth graders now. Congratulations. Congratulations. Up there. No crowd of all of them. Christopher. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank congratulations. All right. So happy for you folks. Robin, congratulations. Yeah. Good job. All right, Alex. Congratulations. Congratulations. Way to go. Way to go. Way to go, guys. Congratulations, Anna. Great people. Miss you guys. Congratulations, baby. Really Congratulations, class of 20. Really gonna miss you. Go back. Go back. Yeah, yeah. Go back. Go back. Go back. I pick up it. I'm liking the bow ties, John Snavely. Right, Anna Jackson. Anna Jackson. Anna. 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 All right, Kyle Keller, great job. Thank you, faculty and staff. Thank well, you, everybody. I see two of our older graduates. I see yes, Kelly Tedesco yes, and Michelle Nguyen. All right, graduates. Class of 2020. 
exactly. Love you guys. Love you. Love everybody. Thank you. All the hard work. You're going to make this a great year. <laughs> All the craziness. I love this one over here. <laughs> <laughs> Our oh, banana. Banana. <laughs> banana, yeah. Good banana. job, everybody. Banana. Hey, great job. Thank you so much. Hey. Okay. Have a great summer, everybody. Hey, have a great hey. evening. Hey. No, I'm not have a nice, a nice party. Enjoy your celebration. The social, social distance thing. <laughs> <laughs> We love you guys. Thank you, faculty, for all your help with the ceremonies. I couldn't do it without you. Well done. You get beaten. It's your fault. I sure hope that we get to do a face-to-face -face one someday soon. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, you ready to say bye-bye? All right. Bye, everybody.